Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What's up third graders? Welcome to video number 10 of the Math FSA Boot Camp series. At this time I'd like for you to go ahead and pause the video and work out number one and number two on your own. You should have the worksheet. Now if you don't have the worksheet, go ahead and check out the link below. There you'll be able to download the worksheet that you need for this lesson. Alright, so go ahead and press pause, complete the first two on your own, throw down your best, show all your thinking and your journey, and I'll see you in just a second. Welcome back everybody. Okay, so before we even tackle this problem, let's just give it a little scansy poo and see what question type this is. Now I'm seeing select all, I'm seeing five answer choices. So what kind of question do you think this is? Yeah, it's a multi-select question. Let's write that down if you did not already. Multi-select. Awesome. All right, now let's go ahead and read the question and mark it up. It's not that much writing, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in and just mark it up. It says select all. That means I'm going to try all or work out all of the numbers, which are down here, that round. I love rounding. To 600 when rounded to the nearest this is important. Okay, so in third grade, you should be able to round numbers to the nearest 10 and to the nearest 100. So what we need to do here is to try out all of these. We need to round all of these to the nearest 100 and see if that answer will give us 600. Now you may have already learned a certain rounding strategy in your class with your teacher. That's totally cool, but for this video, I'm going to show you how I do it. I think of it two ways. First, I've got a rounding wrap, and then I also think about it in terms of it being on a number line. Now I'm going to kind of go through this rounding wrap rather quickly because I'm assuming that you have some understanding on how to round. But if you'd like to have access to me breaking down the rounding wrap that I use, check out McCarthy Math 155. Stay tuned to the end of this video. I'll make sure that I point you in the right direction, okay? All right, so we're gonna start with A, which says 545. All right, this is how my rounding wrap goes. When you round, find, and underline the place. What place? The hundreds place. Ones, tens, hundreds. Spotlight to the right, decide the digits fate. So I see a four, and that's four or less, so I just keep it the same. I'm gonna keep the five the same. Everything before, drop it down. There's nothing before to drop down. And everything after becomes zero. Check me out now, I'm the rounding hero. Okay, <coughs> so 545. When we round it to the nearest hundred, it is 500. 
which is not what we want. So let's go ahead and eliminate choice A. Now another way that you could think about that is that 545 is between 500 and 600, right? Halfway between that would be 550 and 545 is about right there when you're thinking about it. So we're gonna go ahead and round it down to 500. That's how you think about it with a number line approach. Let's check out the next one. B says 554. 554, let's write it down. When you round find and underline the place, spotlight to the right, decide the digits fate. This is five or more, so five or more add one to the rounding place. Where's the rounding place? Right here, so let's add one and take care of that right here, right now. What is five plus one? Six, right? Six. Everything after B comes zero. Check me out now. I'm the rounding hero. 600. Ooh, and that is one of our answers, right? So let's go ahead and mark it up. And let's move on to number two because we found the right answer. Wrong. We need to make sure that we go through all of them. We said we were going to try all of them. We will work out all of them to make sure. Now, if we were thinking about this on a number line, here's my same number line, 554 would be just a little bit after 550, which means that we are rounding up to 600. Now, 578. When you round find and underline the place that they told us, spotlight to the right, decide the digits fate. This is seven, which is five or more. So we add one to the rounding place. Let's take care of that right here, right now. What is five plus one, y'all? Five plus one is six. And that is one of our answers, right? 578 is 600 when we round it to the nearest hundred. So let's mark C as well. According to our number line, 578 would be like about right here, which makes sense that we would round it up to 600. Let's try 632. 632, boom. When you round find and underline the place, spotlight to the right, decide the digit's fate. This is the digit three in the tens place, which means that we are going to keep it the same, keep our six the same. Everything after B comes zero. Check me out now, I'm a rounding hero. 600, which is what we want. And that makes sense because if we extended our number line and made this to 700, this would be 650, and 632 would be about right there. So it makes sense that we round it back to 600. Awesome. The final one. Oh, let me eliminate. Back to it. The final one. 663. When you round find and underline the place, spotlight to the right, decide the digits fate that is five or more. So we're going to add one to the rounding place. We're gonna take care of that right here, right now. What is six plus one? Seven. Everything after B comes zero. Check me out now, I'm the rounding hero. And so 663 rounds up to 700, so we can eliminate. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it is a good thing that I wrote this here. I just said that we were gonna eliminate 632, but I we proved, I made, I totally made a mistake and I'm so glad that I wrote this down because we did all the work. We proved that it does round to 600 and then I eliminated it. What was I thinking? Oh well. Everybody makes mistakes. And that's the great part about writing out your journey on paper because then we proved it there too. We proved on paper that 632 is an answer. I am so sorry. So the correct answer for number one is B, C, and D. Welcome to number two. Let's go ahead and scan the question and decide what question type this is. I see a grid. That must mean this is a gridded response. Jot it down if you did not already, huh? Cool, gridded response. That means that my answer is going to go into the grid. But let's go ahead and read the question first. It says, create a number. 
So we are going to have to create a number. I guess that number is going to go in here, right? That can be rounded to 700 when rounded to the nearest 100 and 720 when rounded to the nearest 10. Whoo, that's a lot of thinking, a lot going on in one problem. We're kind of doing two different things here. So I need to create a number. Let me jot down what I know from the problem. I need to create a number that can be rounded to 700 when rounded to the nearest 100. And when I round it to the nearest 10, it would be 720. But I have to make up my number. So it might be a little bit different than what you made up. And in fact, this is going to be a range of numbers that you can use. So here's how I would think about this problem. Well, first, I know that this number right here, 720, if I took 720 and I rounded it to the nearest 100, that would be 720. It's closer to 700. So technically, you could have an answer of 720 there because 720 rounds to 700 when you round to the nearest 100. 720 also rounds to 720 when you round to the nearest 10. But I'm going to take it up a notch, okay? I'm going to say 720 what? What number could I put right here in the ones place? that would keep the two the same. Yeah, I could put a one, I could put a two, I could put a three, that's right, and I could put a four. I'm gonna go ahead and put four right there. If I did that, the four would make it so the two stays the same, so it would round to 720. I'll show you. 724, 724, let's round it to the nearest hundreds place. When you round, find, and underline the place, spotlight to the right, decide the digits fate. Well, that's two. So we just keep it the same and everything after becomes zero. Check me out now. I'm the rounding hero. Awesome. That was to the hundreds place. And now to the tens place. Ones, tens. When you round, find, and underline the place, spotlight to the right, decide the digits fate. So the four means that we just keep it the same. Keep the two the same. Everything before, drop it down, and everything after becomes zero. Check me out now, I'm the rounding hero. And look at that. My number that I chose, 724, does round to 700 when rounded to the nearest 100. And my number 24 does round to 720 when rounded to the nearest 10. So I'm going to put 724 in here. And you know that on the gridded response, well, hopefully, you know, I've been saying it for this series, that with gridded responses, make sure that you're starting at the left and going over. Or if your teacher tells you to start at the right and make it like four, two, and seven, that's totally cool too. I want you to follow your teacher's guide. Just whatever you do, don't put it randomly in the middle. Got it? Awesome. And then I'm gonna bubble it in. Do, 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 do. Now I know some of you might be thinking, well, Ms. McCarthy, I had another answer. It's not 724, and there are indeed more answers that it could be. So let me go ahead and list out the possible answers for you right over here. I'm going to put down here, possible answers. So let's see if your answer is here. The first answer that would work would be 715, if you had that one. 716 would also work. 717, 718, 719, 720. We already talked about that one. 721, 722, 723, and 724. All of those would work as possible answer choices. So if you have any of those, then you are correct as long as you bubbled it in appropriately too. Okay? All right, everybody. Now, I want you to be honest with yourself. Do you need more practice with rounding? Do you have it mastered yet? If you feel like you do not have it mastered yet, I'm going to send you in the direction for more videos, okay? I want you to check out McCarthy Math 155. This is a series that has 155 videos, one for you to use of every day. And what I want you to take a look at is Unit 1 because that deals with place value for third grade and also rounding. And that's where I break down the rounding wrap and some more of the 
number lines, how to think about it with a number line. So check that out. It is free for seven days for you to give it a try, see if you like it. All over the website, it says click here to get your free trial. So try it out. Teachers, if you are interested in a membership to McCarthy Math 155, this is a series that you can share these videos with your students. What I wanted to do was create something that you could use every day to get your students psyched up, excited, and most importantly, understanding math. So check that out. Okay. The second link that I'm going to include is to the how to pass the math FSA series that I created a few years ago. Now back in the day when I created the how to pass the math FSA series, it was a computer based test y'all. It's not a computer based test anymore and therefore some of the questions look a little bit different than what you will see this year on the FSA. Now what we're doing here in the math FSA boot camp. These are current. These will be much more similar to what you will see on the FSA. But if you need more practice, the How to Pass the Math FSA series provides excellent practice for you to check out. Also, I encourage you to follow me on my social media platforms. That way you stay in the know with McCarthy Math Academy. I'm on Instagram at McCarthy Math Academy. I'm on Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. And of course, here I am on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it just a little bit helpful, hopefully a lot of Bit helpful please do me a huge favor and tap that like button to let me know it really does help me out while you're at it go ahead and subscribe that way you're the first to know when I release new videos and finally before I go I just want you to know that you were created for a purpose that's right you teachers and students you are the ones that we have been waiting for so find your light and shine it bright y'all watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changes Changers, getting ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness, and I will see you all in the next episode.